approaching means the assembly show in Rosemont is right around the corner. This year, we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the show with a stellar lineup of exhibitors and speakers. Today, we're joined by Chuck Weatherington, the president of BTE Technologies since 2001. Mr. Weatherington is an experienced business leader with expertise in global business development, product and service development, engineering, and manufacturing. Chuck will be giving a keynote presentation titled Using Lean to Prepare for Manufacturing 4.0 at the Assembly Show in Rosemont on Wednesday morning, October 26th. Mr. Weatherington, welcome to Assembly Audible, and on behalf of the entire Assembly team, we're looking forward to your keynote presentation at the Assembly Show. Thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate being uh, invited and look forward to the event myself. Great. Okay, so I can't wait to learn more about your company. Could you introduce us to BTE Technologies? What products does your company make and where and how does it make them? Sure. So uh, BTE was founded in 1979 by an orthopedic surgeon, a Russian inventor and a businessman who ran a uh, uh, automation company. Uh, and they, they came about with the idea of, of a complete change to how rehabilitation was done. State of the art in the late 70s was that uh, surgery be done, the, the limb would be put into a cast, 10 weeks later the cast would be taken off, all the muscle had atrophied, and then they have to try to build them back up. And Dr. Curtis, the, the surgeon involved, had the idea that if he could get people doing functional tasks at low and controlled resistance early on, uh, that this would get people back to their activities of daily living, their sports, their job, uh, and would get them back faster. And they worked together to develop the world's first work simulator, which is the first product that was made by BTE, uh, a device that was designed to replicate tens of thousands of real world tasks and, and help people to rehab to do those again. Uh, in the, the four decades that have ensued, we have uh, come out with myriads of products, uh, but the entire time our focus has been on functional rehabilitation, uh, functional assessment of abilities of people to do tasks uh, and to get people back to the job, get back to the sports field or get back to their daily lives as fast as we possibly can. So we, we have a range of products that that can be thought of as being robotic task simulation. Uh, we do a variety of upper and lower extremity rehabilitation, cervical spine rehabilitation, uh, and also an, an entire line of evaluation equipment that's used um, by industry to do return to work evals, uh, to do um, disability assessments, and those types of things. We, um, we manufacture in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, right by BWI Airport. Uh, we proudly manufacture in Maryland and export to 40 countries around the world, including China. Uh, so we're, we're very proud of the, the fact that we are a big part of uh, the American economy and American engine that helps to grow uh, the manufacturing influence of America around the world. Wow, absolutely. And what a fantastic mission. Well, thank you. I think so, too. Um, we, we like to say it's important to do well while doing good. And that's kind of what we do is we're trying to have a successful business that's providing uh, excellent rehabilitation uh, equipment uh, to, uh, to people in the United States and around the world. What are some of the challenges associated with manufacturing your company's medical equipment? So I'm having the same problems that everybody is having with supply chain issues. Um, this is not only just availability of components that we would normally have, but a lot of components are being driven into an obsolete status. Um, so we're having to refocus a lot of our engineering resources into de designing for replacement parts, uh, not just working with supply chain on getting uh, fundamental pieces in. Um, we are an assembly house, so therefore we are a perfect representative for assembly. Uh, all, their, all of our products are our designs, but we're very small volume, uh, high, high value, high cost. Our products tend to range from $30,000 to $100,000 each. Uh, so there's not a lot of volume in them, and that doesn't give us a lot of um, leverage in the marketplace. Uh, the other thing that we're, we're doing as a medical device, so 
redesigning on the fly is not something that you take lightly uh, because we have a, a number of regulatory schemes that we have to adhere to throughout the world. Um, and one of those is going through a, a, a major sea change right now uh, in Europe uh, in order to get the CE mark as a medical device. You have to, um, in the past, it was the metal, medical device directive had to be met. Uh, there's a transition to a new law called the medical device regulation, and that is changing medical devices for every manufacturer around the world. They're all being treated as new, even if you have a product that's been in the market for 15 years. And we're going through an amazing amount of, of work and effort to go through that registration process. So I would say those are the two, two biggest things that we've had uh, as difficulties and challenges for our company. Uh, labor was a, a issue more early this year and last year, but we seem to have gotten through that piece of it. And we have a good team in place and, and uh, I think that piece is, is going well, but we still fight the supply chain and fighting the regulatory changes uh, going around the world. Okay, so BTE Technologies has been implementing lean manufacturing for a while now. Where is the company at on its lean journey? How has it helped and what have you learned? So, so in the case of both lean and manufacturing 4.0, uh, you have to view these as being toolboxes. Um, you don't reach for a hammer if you're trying to drive a screw. Uh, you've got to you've got to first assess where your business is and what are the right tools for you to be implementing. Um, believe it or not, we've come up with some salute, some conclusions based on off of analysis of our data and analysis of our situation with our business that is bringing us to something that you wouldn't think of as being lean. And that's batch manufacturing. But given the, the type of manufacturing that we do and the volumes that we run at, the efficiencies in gathering materials, getting those in place, uh, the training associated and the, the tools associated with making sure that we are building all of our products properly, we gain economies of scale by making uh, four or five or six systems at a time that far outweigh the costs associated with putting that labor into inventory. Our labor, our labor content in our products is very low and even labor fully burdened with overhead still doesn't have a big impact and we gain much more efficiency by uh, going ahead and doing batch manufacture for our components, for our products, excuse me. So th that's an example of uh, one of the things that we have implemented recently. Uh, that's a this year implementation. Uh, and we're seeing a great improvement in labor utilization, uh, and that's going to be a part of my keynote. Okay, so BTE is investigating manufacturing 4.0. Could mm -hmm. you please tell us about that a little bit? Sure, and that goes hand in glove with Lean and the work that we're doing on the manufacturing floor. Uh, we've recently uh, gone through a new ERP implementation. We had, we had purchased an ERP system back in early 2000s. Uh, that replaced a 15-year-old system and had gotten to the point where we needed to upgrade the technology and improve the availability of information right on the shop floor to our uh, production people's uh, fingertips. Um, so one of the things we're doing in Manufacturing 4.0 is dramatically improving the both the availability and the richness of the data that is available to production personnel on the assembly shop floor. We are utilizing uh, TV monitors on rolling stands that are all wireless that are connected to the ERP system. They show assembly processes. They show assembly prints. Uh, all of this information is available for them readily. Um, we have products that we not, may not make for uh, once every three week, three months or four months. So you have to have the data there so that people know exactly what they're supposed to do. You don't want people relying on memory you wanna give them the best tools possible. So it's that's a, a, a perfect example of 4.0 coming into our product. Uh, another example is 4.0 coming into our designs with the level of uh, diagnostic capability and connectivity that we're building into new designs going forward, both in software and in hardware. Okay, so in addition to being president of BTE, you are also the chairman of the National Association of Manufacturers Committee for Small and Mid-Sized Businesses. Mm -hmm. What are some issues that smaller manufacturers like BTE have to deal with that perhaps big companies like GM don't have to worry about so much? 
You know, I wouldn't say that we have issues we have to deal with that larger companies don't. I think it's more of a resource issue and more of a, um, uh, with the size of smaller businesses, you have to make choices. You have to make choices in what you can and, and are willing to do based on the payback that's available. Um, I spent the first half of my career in a large manufacturing company as big as GM, so I know the other side of this as well. And large manufacturing companies tend to try to push uh, the, the a lot of the, the um, innovation and productivity and uh, data security and connectedness down into their supply chains. And the small and medium manufacturers are the supply chains to the large manufacturers. So it's important that uh, that the large manufacturers see that network uh, and see the need to work together with the smalls uh, so that we are sharing data in appropriate ways. We are making sure we have cybersecurity on the shop floor in the right ways, uh, that we are um, uh, just learning to collaborate as an industry uh, rather than uh, uh, individual silos of businesses. Okay. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to add before we close today? Uh, just that I'm really looking forward to this event. I'm uh, excited to see the other speakers that are there. Uh, there's a lot happening in manufacturing right now, and it's an exciting time to be here. Um, I, I have the honor with the NAM of representing manufacturing workers uh, and uh, 13,000 uh, small and medium manufacturing companies. Um, they all have different stories. They're all uh, the, the, the heartbeat of the communities uh, in which they work and live. And it's just a great time to be in manufacturing. So I look forward to sharing with everyone. We're all looking forward to your keynote. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Assembly Audible. For more insights on assembling discrete parts and to finish products and the people behind it all, visit our website, assemblymag.com. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast to keep up with our latest episodes. We're also on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, so we invite you to follow us there too. This has been Assembly Audible. Thanks for listening.